so good evening uh, let's start with our today's webinar so i am tejas ansati uh, marketing manager at indictrans i welcome you all to this eighth webinar of indictrans webinar series so in the last earlier six uh, seven webinars we have covered the modules and uh, various functionalities of the erp next itself uh, but last uh, webinar we have started some uh, different topics so in last webinar we have delved into the uh, the strategies for the successful erp next implementation and for this webinar we have uh, received and that webinar we have received various uh, recognition from various uh, our partners and the erp next partners and the clients as well so hence we have decided next topic should be more different than the earlier uh as currently low code no code uh, solutions are internal in marketing and the government is uh, entrained in market and uh, government also focusing on uh, targeting towards the implementation of low code no code technologies as well as the open source technology we have decided to take this topic uh, indictrans have been working on the uh, with government sector for last 14 years uh, which means from uh 2009 we have been working on government projects and uh, till now we have completed 50 plus uh, 70 plus projects in the government and total around 400 plus project around the world for the government and private projects so we have a strong team for the who can handle the government projects as well and the private project as well so uh, for past several years we have started implementing frappe as well and frappe and erp next for the government client and we have received the uh, good response and as the frappe and erp next is low code no code so, and uh, provides open source source code to the client so which is open source and so the uh, we have started getting with uh, client requests and the uh, requirement from the various clients so hence we decided so that we should conduct a topic related to exploring Frappe and uh, ERPNX success stories in the uh, public sector. To talk about this, uh, we have no better than the Narendra Kutse. So he have been working in the uh, implementing IT uh, software services for the public sector for last 22 years. And uh, he looks after the government sales and work as a uh, director uh, in Indic Trans. And uh, so he will enlighten us about this today's topic. So over to you, Nandir. Uh, sir, you are on mute. Sorry. So thank you for such a warm introduction. Hope I'm audible uh, clearly. Yes, yes. Okay, fine. So uh, we'll start with today's topic and uh, thanks all of you for joining this session because when me and Tejas were discussing about whether to go for such kind of a session, we are very skeptical uh, because we are not sure whether there will be a, a sizable audience to understand how ERP Next can be used or an open source low code, no code framework can be used in uh, public sector domain. Public, one reason is public sector is a very niche segment. Uh, government functioning is very different than the corporate or the, uh, manufacturing or that kind of a segment. But here, uh, uh, we are. We, we, it is very nice to see all of you uh, here. And definitely, as we are spending some time, we are curious to know uh, how the ERP Next or open source framework can be used in ERP Next domain. So I'll. Uh, we'll have two parts of the uh, today's session. One, I will. Uh, walk you through what typically government wants, uh, what is typically expected by government when it is going for ERP implementation or any other uh, application implementation uh, based on my experience. And then there will be a part where I will cover few success stories that Indictrans has deployed in public sector using Prepay or open source ERP Next framework. And then there, then uh, we'll have some question and answer if uh, we have any queries. And then if interested, I can also walk you through the government procurement process. But this procurement process is typically for Indian government, uh, more or less similarly, but it, uh, other governments also will be following similar structure, but there will be variations. So that is the second part. Uh, it will depend on time permission. And if we are 
uh, really keen to know that then we'll go for a second part otherwise we, otherwise we'll cover these two uh, segments in the first part yes uh, tejas you can just move to the next slide <clears throat> So I'm not giving an introduction to indic trans because that is not today's topic. But uh, as we unfold the uh, session, we we'll, uh, during my discussion I will definitely use some cases and some quotes where you will understand that in how in talking about open source. Uh, at least uh, I, when I'm talking in the context of Indian government, so Indian government had already issued uh, guidelines and GRs. mentioning how uh, open source should be embraced by all its either state governments or central governments how they should embrace the open source uh, for varied reasons and in recent times we also came across a uh, lot of uh, tenders or lot of public sector requirements for low code no code framework so this is this was very surprising to us also because we haven't seen such kind of low code no code framework requirement from even corporates also but recently uh, we came across one rfp from tamil nadu government where they asked for a complete framework and not a solution so uh, their intent was they have already skilled manpower over a period of time and they want to use that manpower effectively and they want to have very low dependency on any vendor so they were they are looking for low code no code framework where their in house team can use the framework and can build customized applications for that department so it is very interesting that uh, overall public sector is also moving towards open source and low code no code framework so there are various reasons so we have listed few reasons the first and most important reason uh, reason is a licensing cost because it's ultimately a public exchequer's money so they want to spend it very wisely uh, and they want they, uh, their budget constraints are always there so they are ex always exploring for a solution which is low cost we also know that government procurement process 80% time works on a lowest bid kind of a condition so where you have to quote as low as possible to get that contract so there also the licensing cost if it is uh, either zero or uh, very minimal that that helps them so that is one of the reason why uh, loco uh, licensing cost uh, in erp next case there is no licensing cost so uh, this has been preferred kind of a thing uh second is the cost is not just of licensing but overall implementation cost also is very high if once you if you go for a proprietary applications like oracle sap so um, we know that uh, 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 around 10 years back one of the leading municipal corporation of india one of the richest municipal corporation of india had spent around 100 crore kind of money for licenses and around similar kind of money for implementation of that uh, licenses or a erp system uh, and which is uh, to the to this date also it is not completely implemented or utilized so uh, so that is a kind of uh, seen uh, in the public sector domain so license cost is also very uh, crucial part of the overall when they are going for requirement second part is uh, the customization possibility when you go for a proprietary application the customization possibility is Uh, it can be there it ca it it cannot be there completely but it it is attached with a very high cost to customization so in case of uh, framework like uh, frappe and erp next the cost of customization is comparatively lower so again government requirements is uh, matched in that case third uh, uh, what i mentioned is there is very low dependency on when they want very low dependency on vendors because uh, once they engage with a vendor and if there is any kind of uh, dispute then it it becomes very challenging for them uh, to manage the continuity of their operations and we know that they cannot stop for a single day because many of governments are working with citizens where they cannot stop the operations because their vendor is not supporting uh one more interesting part uh, where their requirements are is any any sort of third party integration we know that indian government is already floating lot of it initiatives like there is aadhar initiative to uh, uh, identify its citizens uh, then there is upi initiative where they are making payment simpler so, uh, likewise there are lot of integrate lot of third party applications which are already uh, in uh, in their domain in their ecosystem uh, 
there is a large national uh, uh, IT company owned by government, which is the NIC. They are also into implementing a lot of government initiative, digitizing a lot of initiative. So when they're digitizing these initiatives and we are adding some new uh, component or new ARP system, they want these all things to be integrated. So they are also again, uh, they want these kind of integrations possible. So if a proprietary system is there and if they are not open for integration, then it becomes challenging for any government uh, to implement or to adopt that system. <clears throat> Uh, similarly, they want to integrate with a lot of other portals, which are again government portals like uh, traffic portal is there for uh, Vahan portal is there for traffic management. Aadhaar is there. So there are n number of <coughs> other portals are there. So these are kind of uh, broad level uh, requirements that are coming from government. Now we'll see how a low code, no code framework of RAPE and ERP next is matching these requirements. Uh, Tejas, you can just move to the next slide. So uh, one, one, it comes to the uh, efficiency uh, is always government's requirement that their timelines are very crucial. So if you are uh, familiar with uh, government government functioning, they took a lot of time to finalize some IT project. <clears throat> so their 80% of their total project time is al already killed or already taken away by the uh, processes that they internally have to follow to finalize the project. And now they have to implement that project in 20% of the time that they have left. <clears throat> so if there is a framework like low code, no code, then it is very easier for them or easier for vendor also like us to implement the system in a comparatively small window of time that is available with us. Second requirement where government and uh, so where uh, they are also exploring uh, is a multilingual uh, functionality because many governments works in uh, their regional language plus English is also a language uh, of communication with their citizens. So uh, Frappe and ERP Next both provide a very good multifunctional capability in the framework itself, which allows you to in engage with citizens, not only to the uh, just uh, information disseminating point, but also from a data entry point or any form level uh, data punching point. Uh, there also the multilingual functionality is uh, possible third is a workflow based decision making we all we know that government has a hierarchical system of uh, working so and that hierarchy is uh, different in different domains or different departments so some department which may be a local uh, kind of functioning have only three layers of uh, authorization or a hierarchy and some department can have very high say around six to seven levels of hierarchical uh, decision making so any platform that is working in government space should be able to accommodate this requirement of a uh, multi layer of decision making. So in Frappe, there is no limit. Uh, we can say to have, uh, we can say to have these kind of workflows accommodation. Then there is a, uh, we know that there are a lot of transfers are happening in government. So if a person is today uh, doing particular task tomorrow, he is either shifted to different department or maybe he hire uh, he moves to the higher uh, authority of the in the organization so the role based access control is very crucial so if it is very hard coded kind of a solution then it becomes uh, tricky for government to manage their uh, transfers and change in the uh, role that is happening a fifth very important component uh, which is a kind of a legal binding to them is any action that is happening in government need to be traced that is why they are following the physical paper based documentation process for ages since British time we are following this pattern or this system because they want everything to be recorded so uh, whether I am uh, authorizing anything or whether I am modifying anything it need to be uh, recorded in the paper based uh, physical system so any system uh, which is shifting me from paper based to a digital system should have capability to capture that uh, functionality of audit so here uh, in a frappe there is a wonderful mechanism of capturing each and every action that user is uh, doing on that uh, on his uh, role and so in any futuristic or any uh, requirement in the compliance zone uh, they have the system in place where they can produce the evidences uh, for that uh, thing 
sixth is as we have already discussed is about the cost efficiency which is again comes with the open source uh, thing and uh, seventh is a scalability because a lot of government application we will see in the next uh, couple of minutes when we are working uh, when we are discussing the use cases we'll see that how scalability and modularity works for government next slide please so any uh, questions till now uh, or shall we can move to the uh, case studies part of it or shall we take the questions at the end of the session that would be i guess better so that the flow will not be uh, disturbed so this is one case which we had worked with uh, state government uh, which is a state uh, livelihood mission uh, the livelihood mission's function is to enroll self help groups across the state and to provide them livelihood opportunities and loan uh, for various purposes so uh, this solution is based on frappe and erpnx framework and on the front end side there was a mobile app which was given to all self help groups and we are very uh, astonished or surprised this solution was rolled out around 3 years back uh, uh, and the adoption of the mobile app in the rural area with self help group women self help groups was very high around 29000 self help groups have been on the platform and they are very active uh, users of the system so they are doing some financial transactions on the platform i'll not get into the details of the uh, case but they are doing financial transactions so every financial transaction got recorded in the erp in terms of ledger and uh, on the front end there was a mobile app so we have created a virtual wallet for every uh, self help group so uh, they used to reload that wallet and some uh, debit was also happening from that wallet and some purchasing and selling was happening uh, kind of a e commerce uh, system was there and also it was integrated with the logistical uh, thing so whether the material dispatched from the manufacturer is reaching to that self help group or not was tracked also very uh, uh, last mile connectivity was given Uh, that they are distributing this content to the uh, village girls and uh, they have to record every transaction whether the village girl has received the material or not and once they received the material the manufacturer used to get some kind of a, a subsidy uh, on his product so this entire value chain entire financial movement uh, was uh, captured in this uh, functionality uh, this now uh, this this was a kind of a pilot they have done and now it is in a scale up uh, uh, scale up phase where they are planning to scale it up to a uh, more more number of products or more number of manufacturers to onboard on the same platform as now it has been tested for a uh, couple of years a uh, next is yes so this use case is with uh, our textile ministry uh, this is a central government project that we have done Uh, here the case is completely different here uh, along with financial transactions there was a complete workflow involved so here there the jute manufacturers across india has to register themselves uh, to the uh, uh, to this uh, uh, organization it is central government body and then there there is going to be a inspection happening from this organization uh, to uh, these manufacturers so and once inspection is done then they have been authorized to sell some products made of jute so uh, so this complete application form filling again mobile plus web both components were there so right from filling the application uh, then uh, assigning the applicant to the inspector uh, from a regional office then inspector actually going on site with a geo uh, fencing or geo uh, location tracking uh then putting his inputs in the whether to accept the application or reject and once application is accepted unique number generation unique qr code generation for all these vendors which qr code can go on their products so the management of entire qr code inventory is been part of this system and uh, then uh, finally the uh, actually uh, uh, people are putting the tags on the product and they are you're getting into the market so uh, in between the payment is also integrated so once i am app applying for this scheme i have to pay certain money de uh, money depending on the size of my manufacturing unit so that calculation and as well as payment gateway integration was done 
uh, in using this ERP next framework and mobile app. So this is again a custom solution uh, made possible and the timelines were very crucial. So made possible because there was a ready framework available. Yeah, Tejas. So this is for one of the leading insurance company where uh, where insu this insurance company has already a large IT company as their tech partner and they have been deploying their financial platform uh, for this company and what is happening is insurance sector is continuously evolving and there are a lot of changes coming up either on the regulatory side or on a user uh, side which they have to incorporate in their uh, core system this happens very frequently and uh, very time constraint based thing is happening so there to accommodate this there are change requests in coming up in the application so the challenge was the uh, company was not able to uh, track whether whatever change request have uh, given to the vendor their IT vendor is being uh, uh, complied or not what is the costing for that and whether the approval is given on that particular change request or not so this entire process right from generating the change request uh, requirement either from a user functional side or from a business side then the vendor is validating this change request and putting up a quotation then approval of his quotation then actual tracking the complete uh, change request cycle uh, the uh, in between whatever milestones they are achieving or not and giving them the payment this entire complete uh, system was managed by uh, one of the module of ERP next very effectively this is also rolled out and this is also in use for last few days uh, again very different sector very different use case and very different user base yeah next stages so this is very common uh, requirement which came across to us from a lot of organizing lot of government departments that they are continuously coming up with new schemes and uh, they want to uh, they want to monitor the complete cycle of scheme so uh, either they have some kind of a central government application or they want to do the complete application development also so whether beneficiary applies for a scheme then there are certain uh, checks and balances whether that beneficiary is genuine or not and once he is approved then certain either in kind or material uh, or cash is moving to his account and it has been tracked so again this has been done for <laughs> rural development department and uh, so this is just a, one use case but uh, similar use cases for subsidy management and uh, dashboarding requirement is there for a lot of other governments we have done we have done one case for chandigarh government uh, and couple of cases for maharashtra government also so again similar requirement where where whether there is some data available and they want to visualize that data uh, and they want to analyze that data on the uh, dashboard side. Next is yes. So this is a digitization of urban local bodies. Uh, as I mentioned in my uh, first introduction, that there is one leading corporation, municipal corporation, adopted uh, a large uh, proprietary application, and they are still struggling. But these are couple of couple of municipal smaller municipal corporations. We have whether we where we have deployed. The complete ERP right from their revenue side, that is tax side, uh, collecting the taxes, managing the complete tax uh, system, uh, and their peripheral uh, sides like uh, their project management is there, their human resources are there, uh, and their uh, uh, say payroll is there, inventories are there. So these complete things uh, are managed on the uh, on the framework, and this is again we are doing this for last five six years for. A couple of municipal local bodies next stages yes so we'll stop over here i guess uh, and as i said so from public sector my understanding or my uh, knowledge is uh, for last few years working with them is there is no uh, there is no uh, hardcore erp requirement but there is a solution requirement they don't want a standard product they want solution uh, to be offered to them where framework uh, plays a very crucial role providing them the solution so that's all from my side so open to question and answer
So any questions? Uh, if not, uh, you can ask the questions on, uh, I'm sharing an email address. So you can ask the questions on that email as well. So uh, I have shared the email address on the chat. So if you have any queries regarding this webinar and the uh, uh, how we can help you in the public sector implementation, uh, you can ask us on the, that email so we can respond to you quickly. And happy to collaborate with all uh, for any of the requirement from public sector. So where you are engaging with any customers and you want any support, either it can be from a pre-sale side or solutioning side or final implementation side. Uh, we uh, coming with our domain experience for last so many years, we can definitely provide the, uh, that kind of support. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.